Okay, again, um, my main discussion today will be about icons. And, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about icons in, in, inside of uh, interfaces. Mostly the icons refer to the little symbols that we see that refer to doing something on your interface. Um, icons can also go along with words. Um, you know, do you, do you have words with the icons? Or, of course, a, a better icon would be um, one that you don't even need words, right? It says exactly what it's supposed to do. And then, um, you know, for, you know, the past 20 some years, we, I've had this debate in class. Is it faster to have, you know, icons or is it faster to have words? You know, some people like icons. What are the advantages of icons? They're more universal, right? It's one thing to, to you know, see the restroom sign at Zerathy and there's a WC. You know, that's, Americans don't even know what a WC is, right? So, you know, it, it, you, you're, you're stuck in a situation where, hey, if I'm in Europe, I know what a WC means, you know what I mean? But here, I, I wouldn't know what that means. So, uh, you know, I, so a lot of people, people that I know who build interfaces, they like the words. I said, people can read the words. But again, it depends on your audience. You know, if your audience is just certain people that read only one language, then maybe words are great, right? But what if it's international? It needs to be a little bit more universal. That's where symbols might come in, or words and symbols, or do you give people the ability to change the language? And all these things are factored into how you build an interface. Let's talk briefly today about the NOM project, and I, I think we saw that last class. It's a great place to do research for icons. Again, the website is called thenounproject.com. One of the downfalls, though, is that you're trapped into a symbol that is only doing symbol of what it is, right? Today, we're going to, um, in our exercise that we do together today, we're going to have objects that do certain things, right? like a battery. Right? You might have a battery. Let's go to a battery. Battery is important to me because my product runs on battery power, right? And so how do I communicate battery is low? By battery, you know, uh, you know, or something like that. So, you know, if I go to battery, I can type it in there. And it's going to give me some ideas, which is great. But again, one of the problems you run into is, is all these icons really going to relate to what you need it to do? So, you know, the now project is good to start with but it's not going to give you everything you need. Specifically also with the Apple pre-made icons. Apple has a whole set of icons that you can use in your interface, in your programming. But again, are they going to meet the needs of what you need? Maybe, maybe not. So that's where you would have to be a little creative and come up with ideas of how to express that through a symbol. Um, uh, the other one we're going to talk about again is paper towel. Is there a symbol? Oh, that looks more like toilet paper to me. Is it a little paper towel? Yeah, maybe that one is a little bit more. Okay. But what if I was saying to dry hands with paper towel? Is there dry hands with paper towel there? Right, it's just a paper towel. So you as a designer might need to, and I'm faced with this all the time, with the, the symbols I uh, have to make for certain products. I, I think I've brought some of the beat up products, or at least the outside. It's not working, right? You can see the battery's not even in there. Doesn't matter. But here's an ugly kind of product right here, right? This finds metal behind something. So I have to come up with symbols of, hey, how to find metal, you know, using this product. You know, so, you know, there's no noun project icon for that, right? We, I have to, we have to make that icon, is what I'm trying to point out. But let's say, um, you know, you're not really good at uh, Illustrator drawing all those things in the computer and you need to build an interface. You could start with a noun project and maybe customize it a little bit. So let's talk about stealing from here. That's my lecture today. We'll talk about stealing from here just to get a start. Okay. But remember, later on, we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about making our own symbols. But as far as my computer discussion today is, is going to be about how to use the icons on here. And, you know, basically most of these you're supposed to pay for. 
get this icon, right? And you have to have an account, right? Create an account and so on. Some you might be get for free. Some you have to join. I don't know because I've never joined. But in this case, uh, you know, I can show you in class just so that you know how to do certain things. So today's discussion, of course, is what I've demonstrated last semester, and hopefully some of you remember how to do that. Again, is how to, to take this object that's in um, the noun project, put it into Illustrator, convert it into a vector, and then I can use that vector either in my app or in whatever I'm building or my comp that I'm demonstrating, right? So uh, um, you've seen it before probably in the previous class. If not, here we go again. So I like this one right here. How about let's say I like this one. If I click on it, of course, I can see it here. But the problem is I can't buy it unless I sign up. So how can I take a picture of this and then make it into a symbol that I can use? To do that, we use the screen grab, right? The Apple Shift 4. So in this case, I'm going to take a screen grab of this by using my Apple Command Shift 4. Turns my cursor into a crosshair. I take that crosshair and I drag it over top of my icon and I release my mouse. And it takes a picture. We already learned how to do that already at the beginning of the semester. Where does it go? Well, it goes on to, of course, the desktop. If I hide my Firefox here by going under Hide Firefox, you'll see here's my symbol right there. But of course, it's in bitmap. This is something that you do in, of course. This is something that you, you know, it's a bitmap. I could put this in Photoshop or put it in Sketch or put it in Illustrator. But again, it's not very, um, it's not very customizable because it's just made of dots. I want to actually convert this object or this, this, this bitmap image or this screen capture convert it into objects. And so to convert this um, bitmap image into objects, we use the uh, Illustrator. I find the best. I can do it in, in Photoshop too. If you want me to demonstrate Photoshop too, I've never done that for any of you yet, I don't think so, but we could do, I could do Photoshop as well if you would like to see that, how I do that in Photoshop as well. But Illustrator is probably the easiest way to convert this into an object, which is basically, if you remember the shapes that we talked about, you can go into Illustrator right here. Illustrator is a program that we use to draw things with and make things, but it's also a great program to convert bitmap images into vector. I'm going to start with a new object inside of Illustrator. It doesn't need to be um, size-wise. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just going to do it. I might, you know, think about color space, though. I might want to make it in RGB because most of the stuff I do in RGB is going to be for screen anyway. So I'm not too worried about size right now. Usually the default for Illustrator is, is 8.5 by 11 because, you know, it's kind of a print program used to print out a paper. So this size that you see by default is 8.5 by 11. It doesn't say that it says points right now, but if we go to inches, you'll see oh, 8.5 by 11. So, you know, it's default to a page size. But I might change the color here, down here under advanced mode, to RGB because you know usually the symbol that I'm making is going to be in a interface which would be of course for a screen anything I do for the screen I usually tend to be in the RGB color space so everything else is going to leave default and of course it gives me my 8.5 by 11 so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in ooh, this is pretty messy if your screen's all messy like this because the teacher before you, because Illustrator does, uh, you know, it leaves the, the interface the way the last person left it. If you always want to go back to default in any of the programs, like if you sit down and Photoshop's all messed up and you're like, ah, oh, I can't, I don't know where any of the tools are, Photoshop's all messed up, where do I go? It's always underneath Window, Workspace, and there's a reset. Somebody is using the type, typography option here. Probably Jean because she's teaching typography class. I like using Essentials, which is this one right here. In fact, I like using Classic Essentials, Essentials Classic. And if I choose that, it'll put the, the artwork back to, to normal. And then if it still doesn't look quite right, you can always go to where it says Reset right here, where it says Reset Essential Classic. And it'll put everything back to the way it was default when you started the program, when you bought it and installed it first. This is pretty much the way you installed it and brought it first. So again, Photoshop's the same way. Where do we find this? It's underneath Window, Workspace. Under there, there's a whole bunch of different workspaces there. 
Uh, if you are confused on where things are, I tend to go to the default workspace. Again, Essentials, I think, is probably the default one. And then you go to Reset, and it'll put things back to the way that they should be, hopefully. Okay, so let's get back to making my icon. Remember the hand, the space bar gives you a hand if you want to move the window around, get used to that. I do that pretty much every day, doing this, doing this. Again, space bar, hand, I'm using two hands. The space bar gives you a hand, left mouse click, I can drag around. Get used to that as well. And in, in addition, you got command minus, command plus, command minus, command plus, command minus, command plus to zoom in and out. Command minus, command plus, I do that pretty much every day. Again, you'll get used to it as you start working with these software. You'll get used to um, doing these and it'll be like driving a car, right? You sit down at your car and you just turn it on and go. Hopefully not too fast. And uh, you know, you'll get used to it. Okay, let's bring in our image. Remember, this is the same way I would do it too. Today I'm gonna have you drawing. You're gonna be drawing icons. You find one, you draw one that you like, you take a picture with your phone, right? Take that picture and bring it into Illustrator and make it into a vector. That's you know that's the quickest way I would do it, right? Same thing. I know we just did a screen grab of the Noun project, but you can do the same thing with a picture that you take on your phone. Here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is place that screen grab into Illustrator. How I place that screen grab into Illustrator again is under File, Place, right here, File, Place. Under File Place, it's going to ask me what do I want. Of course, I'm going to go to the desktop, and under desktop, you'll notice there is right here, screenshot. Right there. It even tells you the date today, 944. We just did it. See it right here? And I'm going to hit Place, and it gives you a little icon that looks like this. It's asking you to draw. Draw it to the size you want. I'm going to hold my left mouse down, and I'm just going to drag it on the screen and release my mouse, and boom. It brings it in there. Now, of course, it's not a vector. It's just a bitmap. This is like if I brought a photo in or something like that into Illustrator. It's just a photo. But I want to convert it into a vector. And what, what does that mean? Well, it's going to take the black parts that you see here and make them into objects. Remember uh, the first day of class, we talked about vector versus bitmap. Bitmap images are things that are made of tiny dots, like the stuff you see in Photoshop, like you see a photo. Where in Illustrator, we tend to use more vector the advantages of vector, of course, is that I can scale it to any size I want, and so on. So to convert this into a vector inside of Photoshop, or in Photoshop, inside of Illustrator, I'm going to use the uh, image trace option. I tend to bring the image trace pop-up window to do that, to open up any pop-up window, like image trace. Again, it's going to be under window. All these are pop-up windows. I know there's a lot of them. I don't really use all of them, to tell you the truth. I just use a few. Probably the one that I want, though, is called Image Trace. It's right here. It's called Image Trace. And if I bring it up, this is the Image Trace option. Now, inside here, I tend to just use black and white because after I make it into a, an object, then I can color it later. I don't have to worry about color. There's no color in this anyways. So the first option you'll see right here where it says black and white, I'm going to leave that there. Threshold is for levels of gray. And so usually if it's something like this that is pure white and black, I'm going to leave it at the middle. It's okay. But, you know, if you have grayscale things, you can adjust this to make things more or less black or white. The last setting in Image Trace before I even try this tool is under Advanced, where I tell the white part to be transparent so you can see through. Because I only want the black part to be an object. I don't want the rest of it to be an object. I only want the black part to be an object. So I'm going to go to where it says advanced right here and down at the bottom where it says ignore white right here, ignore white. What that'll do is it'll make the white part transparent. And so again, what I'm doing is I'm going to convert all the black parts you see here into an object. Ignore white here. And once I hit trace, you see it kind of sharpened it a little bit too. If we look at it, see that? See how it's, Let me undo that so you can see it. See how it's dots? You can see the dots, right? Because that's because I took a screen grab of it, right? I it was a screen grab. When you do a screen grab, it takes whatever's on the screen, which is basically made of dots, and converts it into, uh, um, you know, whatever's on the screen and dots. It, it makes a picture of the dots. But again, if you hit this image trace in Illustrator, you hit trace, 
boom, it makes it into an object. Now you see there's no dots in there because it's a mathematical equation. Each one of these things is a mathematical equation. Now I still can't manipulate it yet though because what Illustrator does is it makes it into a group. And so if you want to change the color of this, I have to kind of ungroup it. To ungroup it inside of Illustrator so that maybe I want the positive to be red and the negative to be and to be blue. I don't know. Whatever. What's in your car? Negative is I don't know what. The terminal on our top oh black usually, isn't it? Something like that. Doesn't matter. I need to ungroup this so I can use it. To ungroup it is underneath the object option, and we use expand. By using object expand, it will convert this object into editable objects. Again, object expand, and just hit OK. You don't have to change anything. You say, well, that doesn't look anything. Well, here's where you go. You can change things now. How can I change them? Well, I can use the white selection tool right here, the direct selection tool, the white one, and I can click on something. You might have to click off first. I'm going to click off and click on. Click off, click on, click on. Oh. And then if the white is still there, I don't know why the white is still there. There still seems to be a white. It's not white. I don't know what this is. I'm going to delete that, whatever that is. I don't know what that was. Well, whatever that was, I deleted it. But as you can see, you can now have objects. I can color this a separate color if I want. Uh-oh, look at that. It didn't turn red. Why not? Well, whenever you use the image trace option, I chose black and white, right? Remember black and white in image trace? So it only sees this as black and white with shades of gray. If I wanted to give this color, I have to convert the object that you see into a color object. To do that is underneath the color option right here. Under Again, it's in our pop-up window. Sorry to say, there's more pop-up windows. It's under window color. And if I go under window color, It'll come up, and you'll notice there's only gray in there. And you're like, there's only gray in there. Well, that's because there's no color in any of these objects. I have this object selected, no color in here. So I need to tell it to have color in here. And so if I go to the pop-up window up here in the upper right corner, you'll see, in the, again, I'm in the color pop-up window. There's these little dashed lines. That's where all the options are. Even in Photoshop, even in Sketch, even in Illustrator, there's, there's options to a lot of the menus here. And that, that option is up here in the upper right corner. You'll see, hey, if I go to RGB right here, watch what happens. Oh, that color comes in. Did you see the color now? I have to do that with each object. If I click on well, I can select all the objects if I want by dragging a mouse around and selecting all the objects. See how I select all the objects? And then convert them all to RGB right there. And then I can color them. So again, that's another way. I don't know why they're not all converting at the same time. It's not working. Don't know why. Let's select one at a time. RGB. And let's make that blue. There we go. Oops. Blue. This. RGB. Let's make that green. This. RGB. Let's make it yellow. This. RGB. Oh, not that. RGB. Let's make it pink. Woo, look at that symbol. It doesn't say battery anymore. It looks like it looks like an emoji that I would use or something, right? Okay. Again, a lot of those steps I, I kind of went through kind of quickly, but of course we've recorded it. You go back and watch it. Uh, this is something that we'll show a couple times in class because when we get to making interfaces, you'll be uh, um, you know putting more than one icon together. We'll be you know using Illustrator a lot to make the inner you know make the objects. Now the reason why we use Illustrator and the purpose of this all is because this is now I can select all these objects and I can scale them to any size I want, make them small, make them big, small, big. I can take these objects that you see here and I can copy and paste them into Sketch or into Photoshop. Do you remember when we were using Photoshop to make the little Santa Cruz thing, right? I can take this from Illustrator now and I can copy it. Remember, copy on the keyboard is what? Don't say it all at once. Command C. Command C. Command C for copy. I can go over to Photoshop. And I can open up my whatever. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of things from previous classes. Oh, here's my Santa Cruz app. Here it is. Remember this Santa Cruz app? Okay. 
and I can paste it in there by hitting Command V. And it's going to ask me, how do you want to paste it into Photoshop? And I don't want to paste it as pixels because that kind of destroys the, 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 the advantage of using a vector. I don't want to use paths because paths have to be, um, it's, it's an object. It's, you don't want to use paths unless you're doing a selection. Shape layer is good because it'll make it into vectors, but the problem with that is it can only be one color. Okay, but remember, I have multicolors. Remember, I had purple, yellow, and stuff like that. So if I use what's called a smart object, uh, and then there's a box that says add to my current library, you can turn it off. What that does is one of the downfalls of, of the Adobe product and suite is as you're building and making things, it wants to keep storing them in the cloud. The library is a cloud. So if I'm logged in as myself here under my Adobe account, and I say add to library, it's going to add it to my cloud, my, my Raskoff um, account cloud. So if I go home to my house and I open up Illustrator or open up Photoshop, there will be a library in there, and that symbol will be there, and I'll be able to use it. It's like a cloud thing, right, storing things in the cloud. So if you say add to my current library, so I don't know where this library is because this is student logged in. I'm going to leave it out. But if you are logged in as yourself, you can have that symbol when things follow you around. Okay, let's see here again. It's called a smart object. What is a smart object? Well, it is basically that Illustrator file that I brought into Photoshop that is now a vector object that I can scale and it'll keep it as vector. Here we go. If I hit OK, and it put it over here in the members one, but you can see it's over here because I had the members uh, thing, and this one's locked. <laughs> But you can see it here. It's a smart object. If you look at the symbol inside of Photoshop here, oh, it's asking me to do something here. If you ever it, you can't do something, you're kind of locked. Again, you get hit this tool right here, the move tool, and it'll ask you, hey, do you want to do this? You're going to say, yeah, I'm going to place it in here. Okay, so again, if you look at it inside of Photoshop, you'll see it says vector smart object. It's, it's the Illustrator file from Illustrator. And I can scale it bigger, again, and scale it smaller inside of Photoshop. Again, hit the Move tool when you're done. Always hit the Move tool when you're done. It's going to ask you to place it. Yes. And But you can see it is now straight from Illustrator into Photoshop. Very useful. I do the same thing with Sketch. I can bring symbols in and use symbols uh, probably the best way. The other advantage of also is that I can link this to the Illustrator file, and if I go and change the Illustrator file, it'll change this automatically. They can be linked together. That way, especially if you're collaborating with somebody, right? You have them working on things for you. If you have them linked, they can make changes and it'll automatically cascade through the interface. Just like the CSS file in your HTML, right? We all love our CSS file, don't we? Cascading. It is almost like that. Okay, so you think, I know that was a lot, it's okay, you can watch the video later. We'll do it a couple times in class, this is not the only time I'm going to show you what we just did, because we do it a lot, as far as bringing icons in, making them, getting them into our interface somehow. Any questions? I know you probably don't remember it all, but I'm going to stop recording.